All right, this is a 440, and Tom and I are gonna walk through priming the engine, which is basically getting the oil to slosh around inside before you actually start it, so that when you do start it, it's not all dry. And also, you can figure out if you've got a whole bunch of leaks or no oil pressure whatsoever. Can I try and duplicate what Freiburger does? <laughs> does he do a fancy pour? He does do a fancy pour. I'm not that fancy. This is a camshaft braking additive. And um, you can hear our neighbors are having a party. So a little, <laughs> little bit later, we might go over there. They might not be able to hear that. Pretty sure they can hear it. And then uh, some 1030 oil, which is good for rebuilt engines of this vintage. If you use a straight 30 weight, it doesn't flow cold as well as 1030 does. So it's better to have 1030. I hope they didn't pay too much money to, to watch me pour oil in this engine. Um, they haven't paid any money. Oh, well, then I don't feel so bad about taking up their entire day. So what's different about braking oil than uh, just regular oil? Uh, well, this engine has a flat tap and camshaft, and so it has zinc, uh, phosphates, and various other additives that are required for flat tap and cams. Modern engines don't have that. They have roller cams, they don't need this type of additive package. This additive package is not good for catalytic converters because it plates the converter. That's why the government banned it. You don't have it in auto parts stores anymore. It's for off-road use only. That's what the guy at Summit I had to say, yes, it's for off-road use. <laughs> Do you need to put in? Um, I'm gonna put four in plus the additive. It actually holds a little bit more, but for just priming it, I don't need any more than that in it. Plus, if we do find that there are any leaks, um, this is one less quart you have to clean up. Well, actually, we actually don't have any more oil. This is our last one. <laughs> <laughs> you better call your off-road buddy again. All right, so the oil's in. I've got a gauge. This is a. Uh, Priming rod for Chrysler, it's just a hex. Did you buy that? Um, a long time ago, probably yes. What size hex is it? I would guess it's 5 16 by looking at it. I've never been asked that question. It's the size that fits a Chrysler oil pump. So you can see that we currently have no oil pressure. Let's hope it doesn't stay that way. Now we're gonna prime a bit. And you Initially, there won't be any resistance on this, but then when it primes, you'll get a lot of force. And just back up real quick, when you put that in, what are you feeling for? Um, how do you know you're in the right spot? And which direction are you turning it? Well, in, the, in this engine, the rotation is counterclockwise. I'm engaging the oil pump with this hex, which you can't see it, but when you're down in that hole, you just there's a hex in the oil pump. Until it goes in. It's actually got oil in it now, so it's hard to push it in. But this is this. This is a disassembled oil pump. And that part is the hex. So we're turning this. This is a used one, but this is a rotor. That's what's bolted on the engine. Let's do it. Here comes the, uh, the excitement. Hopefully there's no leaks. <laughs> we'll find out, right? Hopefully it's got oil pressure now that I'm on, on TV. So you, you, see, you saw how long it took to get some oil pressure. That's because the oil galleys and the, and the pickup tube and everything was empty. And if it just remained very low or it didn't, you know, go above 10 or 20, what would you look for as a, as a cause of that problem? Did you put the oil in? Step one. If you still have no oil pressure, is there oil on the ground somewhere? No. If you still have no oil pressure, sometimes if you crack the oil filter, it, it could have an airlock, like a bubble, like a burp. So if you crack the oil filter while you crank it and then oil appears, tighten it back up and it'll, it'll prime. And if none of that works, 
If none of that works, you may have left an oil galley plug out on the inside, which I personally have never done, but I have seen it. In, in which case the oil would just be bypassing everything. All right, so. so you wanna build up some oil pressure. Normally I do this with the valve covers off so you can actually see oil going to the rockers. And you wanna turn the engine over a little bit as you go. So what's happening right now is the oil is circulating, it's filling up the rocker shaft, filling the rockers with oil. And that's what you want to make sure. You want to make sure you got oil everywhere. You should do this. We're doing it right now just to make sure that it's working. But before I start this, I'll do it again. This is the last step before you start an engine. Now we're doing it on an engine stand using this drill. If this engine was in a car, hooked up, had a starter, would you still do it this way or would you do it by bumping the starter? You have to do it this way because nothing's rotating right now and we have oil pressure. So the problem with doing it by bumping the starter, even if you had no spark plugs in it, is that you're you're moving the dry parts. But we're not currently moving any dry parts. We're just moving oil. Right. Yeah. If you look at the gauge, like you can see, it's all it's got 70 pounds roughly. That's already like. 65 more than a Pontiac, so it is good. Oh, Brandon's gonna see this and you're gonna make him feel really bad. <laughs> and that's it. That's uh, it's basically primed. And once again, when we get ready to start it, this is after everything is set up, this is the last thing you do. Put the distributor in and fire it up. <laughs>